All right, guys, so we're gonna to touch base here on probably one of my favorite, and I say this a lot in all the things I do, because this is definitely one of those at the top of my list, the body triangle on the back. Uh, the body triangle on the back, to me, is easily the strongest position there is in jiu-jitsu for control-wise, because if you have a good body triangle and you know how to follow somebody right, it's almost impossible to get out, and a lot of people suffer. I get the question all the time, how do I get out of a body triangle on the back? And that's a hard one. It's a, it's a mission to get out because it really paralyzes a lot of your body. It takes away your, your lower extremities and it tightens you up and it squeezes you and it drains you. And um, I got really good at doing this. I, I do it so well that sometimes I lock body triangles and, and when I'm in a, in, a, in a mean mood, I just feel like just tapping people with just squeezes. I just squeeze and tap them and let them go and do it again. And I feel like I, that's a practice in myself to do it because when I get an opportunity to get on somebody's back, I, I'm going to squeeze them and I'm going to make them hurt in that position until they were ready to give up. So I'm going to talk to you about all the things that I see that are problems when I see people do body triangles and how they suffer with it. All right, we're going to talk about the, the details of your feet, the details where you put your feet, what you shouldn't and shouldn't do. I've, I've heard so many commentaries over the, uh, over the years about, oh, body triangles are not that good. You're not, you know, in certain tournaments, they don't give you points for them because it's not a good control. It's amazing control. It's to me the strongest control there is, and I'm going to explain to you guys everything behind it. So, one of the things that uh, made my body control uh, good here is again this positioning of my my frames. So I'll step on my hips, I push the guy up, and now I'm not here at this point. I can use my hooks on the inside, all right, and that's why hooks are great. But when I'm on the body triangle, my goal is to bring my feet up. All right, I want to bring my feet up so I can address what side I'm going to lock it on. All right, and in this case, because Jeff is on this side, we're going to lock the body triangle on this side. And one of my goals is, just like we uh, do triangles, I want to have my feet and my toes up. I want to have jiu-jitsu feet, not ballerina feet. All right, jiu-jitsu feet, ballerina feet. If you lock with your body triangle on your foot, you're going to suffer with getting hurt. So whenever you lock a body triangle, adjust yourself to having your toes up. All right, you see how my toes are up? And this makes it super tight right away. It will keep you tight the whole process through. All right, and one of the things that I like right away is locking the foot underneath the butt. I don't leave my foot out here dangling like this because then Jeff can try to catch it and maybe try to put it in the middle and bridge on my foot. Same thing on the back side. A lot of people do a step and then they try to bridge on your foot. You know, I've seen people get tapped with this. I honestly, I don't understand how because if your legs are tight and your feet are tight, it should be like a boot. All right, when you go for, somebody goes for a foot lock and you got a boot, it may be uncomfortable, but it shouldn't tap you. So you should be booted the whole time here and then a boot actually squeezes your legs and then it builds a conditioning in your legs that just keeps the person stiff and this traps his hips. This limits him to just using his arms to defend. So this to me is super important, all right? Another thing that I do is I hook on the butt here, all right, to keep them close, or I hook on the inside of the legs. Whenever I get a chance and the guy's trying to run, I use the body triangle like this a lot, and people always ask me, like, why do you do that? You know, aren't you scared of your foot? No, again, I got a boot out there. He's not gonna do anything to it. There's not much to do. And what this does is it, if Jeff starts to square away from me and turn his hips and try to turn away, this keeps Jeff right here in front of me. And I can watch everything Jeff's doing. I can see where his neck is, I can, I can see what he's thinking, and a lot of times I used to use this for MMA, where I would just bridge the guy over and go to mat with this, and this becomes a horrible position for whoever's underneath you. So I'll give you guys an example. I come up with my hand, and look, I bridge Jeff over. Now look, I stretch Jeff out, and this paralyzes the person, bring Jeff back. All right, and this is great for you guys that are looking to get a good finish. That's an easy one. When you get sideways like this, and the person is giving you this angle, this is the time to turn them and get them in that horrible position so you could look do a cross face on the face down, all right? But most important, what this does is it just gives you awesome control to keep them in front of you. And you're actually, I'm being nice with my squeeze here, but you should be also squeezing the ribs. The more you squeeze in the middle, the more they're gonna suffer in this position, the easier you'll find your attacks to happen. Cross faces down, you know, pulling back for rear nakeds, everything will start to happen here. And again, you have to be comfortable with the triangle. And one of the things is we're gonna go back all the way from the beginning. One of the things that I like to do is I like to make people understand is that when you lock it, you want to almost understand how far you can go with your leg, all right, before you start doing this over and over again. So for example, if I'm down, it's going to be harder to lock. So if I come up, 
it's easier to lock. So it's like I'm coming up and grabbing my own shin if I have to. It actually makes it easier to lock this and it actually gets tighter. So for example, right here, watch this. I'm gonna lock it down here. Look at that. So this is where people get caught. They lock triangles like this and then the guy crosses over your foot and now you're like, oh my God, my foot's getting bridged on, this hurts. Bring your triangle up, bring it up, then lock it and you'll feel the difference. Actually, you can even ask your partner. The difference becomes tremendous for the guy who's here because it gets super tight. And now I also lock it and I extend my hips up. Now look, I'm much higher than Jeff. And this makes my attack so much more potent because I have both my arms free and I don't need to worry about seatbelt here. I don't have to worry about trapping his upper body. And that's the difference between body triangle and hooks. When I have my hooks, I have to make sure that I'm always trapping the upper body. And that's why I use the Kimura grip. But when I'm in the body triangle, I can free my hands up and just go, nah, man, you're not gonna move here. You can turn. And then if you turn, I follow you. If you turn that way, I go to mount. If you try to go the other way, I turn you again and I go to mount the other way. It's, it, it, it just limits your partner's uh, escapes. And it makes it so, such good control. All right, and then once you can blend this with other things, that's when your back um, system will become amazing because then you have total um, awareness and control of the position.